to enter a retro is a downgrade from the original game, with lesser interesting characters and a plot that revolves of Electro trying to take over the world, which doesn't fit his character at all. Certainly, probably one of my least favorite Spider-Man games, but at least it's not like a dumpster fire type of game. Obviously, after the success of Spider-Man 2000, a sequel was in development, but the developer this time was Vicarious Visions because Neversoft left to work on the Tony Hawk Pro Scare games. And so, what you have here is a generic video game. You see, Spider-Man is now trying to stop Electro from frying a bio-nexus device that will make him into a super powerful individual. And not just that though, but this video game does not improve upon the original whatsoever. You see, when it comes to sequel video games, the number one thing you should always do is improve upon the original game. When you fail to include new features, then well, your game suffers for it. Like, Spider-Man still can't swing more than two times without tiring out. Like, really, it would have been hard to have him swing indefinitely. Yeah, I know, PS1 limitations, but still. You could have did better if you're going to make a sequel to one of the greatest Spider-Man games. But this one here is pretty mediocre. You see, you also have feelings such as Shocker, The Lizard, Sandman, Electro, Hammerhead. <laughs> really, Hammerhead? He's like one of the worst Spider-Man villains like, of all time. And it's not just that. The problem is the story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, why would Electro try to take over the world? That's never been his character. He's always the type of villain that tries to rob banks, not try to create some kind of world domination. The voice cast is interesting, but without the more interesting Spider-Man characters from the first game, then this game suffers tremendously for it. Like, a lot of the levels feel generic, and then it's like boss fight, and some of the boss fights in this game is only there to try to pat out the... Well, the power of the levels of this game. What can I say? This game is less impressive than Spider-Man 2000. But I will say it has a lot of comic books that you can collect, you know, game covers, whatever. It has a lot of costumes you can wear throughout the game. But, man, what this game really suffers is the story, which is not that interesting. And then when you have all this, it makes for a Spider-Man game that's not... Rememberable whatsoever. Uh, and another thing, the music in this game is very terrible. It's not as good as the first video game. And the mechanics is just the same. You see, this Spider Man game, I always thought it was very bad in terms of gameplay. It's nothing impressive. You see, Spider Man 2000 is behold as a classic Spider Man game because. It actually left a story that you wanted to see to the end. This one, not so much. Now, the guy who voiced Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2000, he does return for this. Along as the other few voice casts. But without the presence of a big threat, like the symbiote invasion in the first game. And this got Electro Spider-Man trying to stop. But it all just leads to, I don't know, some very... Not memorable parts. I mean, what Spider-Man fights Shocker, then he goes to Hanger, then you know, he takes on Sandman, Hammer. It. it all is a mess. And this Spider-Man game came out a year after the PS2 was already out. You see, that's what I'll get. If gamers really want a Spider-Man fix, then it should have probably wait a year to play Spider-Man in the movie game, which is, in my opinion, better than this video game here. Uh, do yourself a favor, if you never played this game and you're a big Spider-Man fan, you could probably skip this one because honestly, you're not missing much. I'm giving this video game a 6 out of a 10. Now, obviously, if the story was better and if the gameplay mechanics were updated, then this would have been a Spider-Man game that you could probably talk about for years. But nah, it had a story no one really cared about. And obviously, there are two copies of this game. There's the pre-9-11 ones and the one after 9-11. So, like, in the pre-9-11 copy, Spider-Man fought Electro on the Twin Towers. But obviously, after the 9-11 attacks happened, they had to change it. 
And so it's an experiment fighting Electro in some random building. Nonetheless, though, I think this video game has its issues. And it is not a great game whatsoever. It's not the worst spy game ever, but there is a lot of missed potential here. And ultimately, this game just falls on its face at the end of the day. And that's my review of Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro. Okay, leave your comments down below in the session and let me know what you thought about this video game over the years. Do you love it? Hey, or in the middle? Alright, this is Slim Guy 172 saying, Peace out.